Thanks, Dr. Venugopalan. I now request Mr. Shantanu Paul to come on stage and talk about computer science engineering. Uh, Mr. Paul is a BTEC in computer science from Madhya Madras, a PhD in computer science from University of Michigan and Notre He was a recipient of the prestigious Ratham Home Pre Doctoral Fellowship and the IBM Canada Fellowship. He worked in the prestigious IBM and DJ Watson Labs and he was the Chief Technology Officer at Open Pages, a Boston based market leader in corporate risk management solutions. He was also the CEO and co founder at the uh, B2B technology startup that Open Pages acquired in 2001. He was a key member of the Senior Leadership Committee uh, with the Virtue Star Corporation from 2003 to 2008, and he is currently the co founder and CEO of Talent Spring. Good morning everyone, it's great to see such a wonderful crowd in front of us and uh, you know, listening to the great presentations uh, that came ahead of me, you know, grandfatherly, the great branches of engineering, mechanical, civil, engineering, electrical and chemical, computer science is like the youngest brother of the five brother family who's kind of late to the, late to the game, much younger profession, much younger uh, line of work and when you have a line of work that is young and new and the youngest brother of a five brother family, you have some peculiar problems. So I thought I'll start my uh, speech with a bit of a story, perhaps a joke. In fact, I didn't see any room for size or humor as well in the presentation, so I'll start with my own uh, story. So we're going to start the joke, so pay attention to get the whole thing. So the peculiar problem with computer science and software engineering in general is this. Back in the 60s, when the Americans were trying to design the first spaceship, to go up, uh, they were actually trying to wonder how to create the hardware and software that would go on the spaceship so they can actually help the spaceship have a successful mission. So about 250 million dollars of software would build the spaceship itself that went to the mechanical, electrical, engineering folks and they started the spaceship. Then 100 million was started up for the computer technology and that 100 million was then broken into two parts. 50 million for hardware to go on the spaceship and 50 million for the software to go on the spaceship. So this seemed like a pretty good uh, compromise and a good formula as far as the government agency was concerned. So the money was divided accordingly and given to different program managers for different functions. So 50 million went to the person who was building the hardware and 50 million went to the program manager who was building the software. So then, uh, in about six months time, a government auditor from uh, comes down and says, hey, you want to actually calculate uh, what has been going on with this money? You want to get an accounting and audit done? And in fact, in time, you start planning for the actual spaceship to work because you want to know what's going on the spaceship. So they went to the guys and said, when the software guy, and said, you know, I want to know, since you million dollars been spent, what exactly have you built? And more importantly, what is the total rate of the stuff that you have built? And how much will it pay on the spaceship? And the program says, well, you know, what we built, it doesn't have any rate. So you can take up zero kilograms. So I was very unhappy with this. He just wouldn't believe that so much money was spent on building something at a zero kilogram weight. So he went back to the process and unhappy. And then he came back after a few days and said, you know, I went to talk to the hardware guys. They have, you know, literally tons and tons of equipment that's going to go on the spaceship. So we are not convinced that you're spending this money wisely. You tell us what exactly you're doing with this money and how you're going to capture software. So the program manager says, you know, sir, we have this specific thing that you don't actually software doesn't have any rate. So the auditor goes away one more time, quite unhappy. But this time comes back to say last time that look, I have a job. There is a security guard meeting outside who I talked to. And I asked the security guard, how do you guys carry your stuff down? And the guy says, you can big crates in which there are these cards. Do you guys know what these cards are? Anybody want to know what a card is? A punch card? So you guys carry these punch cards. And that's how you build the software. So now just tell me how many punch cards you have and what's the way to each punch card. You can multiply it in the way. And this, by this time, the program director is very really unhappy. He says, Look, sir, you don't understand. We don't use the cards, we just use the holes. <laughs> so that's kind of the background of computer science. I'll start with the thought. And now move into the actual presentation of uh, computer science as a field. So if you look at the formal definition of computer sciences and engineering, you'll find the following. It's a study of computation and a study of automation. Now what does that mean? It's pretty abstract compared to other engineering fields. We talk about, if you ask basic questions to computer scientists, what are you trying to do? 
But the basic question can answer can be traced back to one common theme, which is we're trying to figure out if something can be automated. And if it can be automated, how efficiently can it be automated? That is the basic question that every computer science scientist aspires to answer. So it includes, of course, the study of computer technology, hardware, and software, as we talked about earlier. And also the study and application of computer technology in various fields of life. In fact, all walks of life today are touched by technology that comes from computers. Science, engineering, business, arts, any walk of life you can think of is today completely immersed in technology that comes from computers. So I think, uh, as the writing point that there is no particular skill set that I want to draw other than to say that a foundation of mathematics and sciences that's given, you wouldn't be here in this room if you didn't have that. A very deep passion for problem solving, I think that's the given to most engineers, analytical skills, that's standard. A clean and great instinct, I think that's an important part of being a computer scientist, because one of the few fields where construction is very abstract. You construct things that, as I said before to my story, you create an abstract things. So the idea of a creative great instinct with strong conceptualization powers is very important. Being able to synthesize your findings, so not just analysis but synthesis. How do you take pattern that you see and you actually create from that high-level designs? I think tenacity hardware resilience is very important because failure is common in computer science. I think except for building, maybe drug discovery, computer science is a very failure-prone profession where a lot of things you build don't work and you have to have a lot of tenacity to get to that stage. I think good to skills goes without saying and a bit of knowledge of programming and programs will help you get a good start. So what specialization should in computer science? I won't have time to go into them in detail, but I'll get touch upon a couple of them. Uh, for example, you can specialize in various parts. In fact, if you go to any good university internationally, which has a postgraduate program in computer science, you'll find these subjects in them. So for example, you might actually get attracted to something like artificial intelligence, which is the study of how you simulate human intelligence using computers. So for example, IBM research with this great chess machine, uh, D. Blue, which ultimately beat Gary Kasparov. That's an example of an AI or artificial intelligence application. So, in graphics, you know, you see the kind of uh, amazing movies, uh, those you've seen, uh, Avatar and other movies in recent times, that's a phenomenal application of computer graphics that has been applied in the media and film industry. If you look at uh, things like robotics, I think that's another area where there's a lot of value uh, created, and I think in we're talking about waste management, talking about hazardous uh, activities done by other kinds of engineering, we need robots to do these things. So again, the hardware, the programming of those robots, just an example. So the engineering field, you can see some overlap between uh, computer science and electrical engineering, electronics in particular in this. Not surprisingly, they are essentially overlapping professions in some ways. Uh, certainly the hardware part is overlapping. And in many um, great universities, you find that the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science go hand in hand. What kind of figures and jobs can you expect? Well, I think this is an interesting slide because I personally was doing this last night and thinking that I personally have journeyed so many of these in my career. For example, your employers after you succeed in getting your degree in computer science could be an IT services or consulting firm, like Infosys, like Wipro. It could be a product firm, uh, such as uh, Oracle or Microsoft. It could be hardware product firm, like Cisco, Motorola and so forth. It could be IT consulting firms like Pricewaterhouse, EMY, etc. You could have an academic position as a university professor. You could join a research laboratory like IBM or AT&T's research laboratories, which are world famous, uh, GE as well. Jobs in government, I think e-governance is huge, so that's going to be a big area. Uh, and finally, all major industries today have a very significant and thriving uh, IT and technology department. In fact, we say that uh, today banks are nothing but software companies in disguise because internet banking is dominating most of the transactions they're doing, as an example. The roles that are there are quite widespread. Uh, I personally, if you look at my personal journey, I have touched upon these myself. I've been a software engineer, a software architect. I've been a chief technology officer. I have been a research scientist. So as you can see, your career can go into multiple areas, and there's a wide choice of all of these things. The most important part, I think, is entrepreneurship in my view, because end of the day, it's one of those few fields where you don't have any capital expenses to start up an industry or a firm. You don't need to have plant machinery, you don't have very high amount of initial investment. If you're a creative problem solver who can latch onto some good problems in industry or business, you can start your own company. So a lot of people in computer science become entrepreneurs for that reason. Why do you computer science? I think just some facts to you that I want to share. Um, there's going to be 40% increase in jobs in the next you know, four or five years. That's a huge number of opportunities. Uh, similarly, in the next four years, 
If you look at the number of jobs needed, available versus people available, there's a huge spread. Two million jobs essentially is a spread between supply and demand. 